Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for ruffles and flourishes, the presentation of the colors, the singing of the national anthem by Staff Sergeant DeAndre Boyd, 388th Operation Support Squadron, and the invocation by Chaplain Major Scott Baker. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets regular, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the Please join me in prayer. God, in this confusing world of social, cultural, and political upheaval, in this world where many of us experience that our values are under siege, during this time of less with less, we pause today to celebrate an enormous achievement of human ingenuity, skill, creativity, and perseverance. Today, the combat capability of the United States Air Force takes a giant step forward and in this, we rejoice. We rejoice, Lord, because we can trust you to use the F-35 to advance freedom and justice in our world. We rejoice because with this new weapon system, more innocent lives might be spared. And we rejoice because you have called us to this and have strengthened our hands and have energized our minds and have given us courage to our hearts. We ask now, God, for your blessing even as we celebrate the many partnerships and collaborations that have made this moment possible, we seek your wisdom. We long for peace in the world, and so we ask for your favor among the nations. 
and as we glory in the sheer might and awesomeness of a shiny new weapon system, we ask for a humility that acknowledges your central role in bringing healing to the world we love. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom to look one another in the eye and say, job well done. We'll be careful to give you all the glory as we celebrate our role in the greatest Air Force the world has ever seen. Amen. Please be seated. Lieutenant Colonel Steve Anderson, Deputy Commander, 388th Maintenance Group, will introduce the official party and distinguished guests. Good morning. At this time, we would like to extend a special welcome to our honored guests. Please hold your applause until all introductions have been made. The Honorable Gary Herbert, Governor of Utah. The Honorable Orrin Hatch, President Pro Tempore of the United States Senate. The Honorable Rob Bishop, United States Representative. The Honorable Deborah Lee James, Secretary of the Air Force. General David L. Goldfein, Chief of Staff of the Air Force. General Hawk Carlisle, Commander, Air Combat Command, and his wife Jillian. Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, number 17, James A. Cody. Lieutenant General Mary Ann Miller, Chief of Air Force Reserve. Lieutenant General Lee K. Levy II, Commander, Air Force Sustainment Center. Rear Admiral Upper Randy Marr, Deputy Program Executive Officer and Deputy Program Director, F-35 Lightning II. And to all elected officials, civic leaders, community members, wing, group, and squadron commanders, command chiefs, directors, and the men and women of Team Hill. We welcome you and thank you for attending today's celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Commander, 388th Fighter Wing, Colonel Brad Lyons. Honored guests, distinguished visitors, national, state, and local leaders, fellow commanders, airmen, and friends. Welcome to your Air Force's F-35 IOC celebration. I hope you're ex as excited to be here as we are, and I'd like to start by offering a quick thank you to the team that helped coordinate both this event and our celebration tonight. A lot of effort went into making this a success, and the folks who did the work did so to honor their teammates. Thank you. We're grateful. A year ago, I stood before you in our first F-35 hangar, and I described how this aircraft represents the future of tactical aviation for the United States Air Force, how it will become the backbone of our fighter fleet. We discussed threats from peer competitors in the modern battle space, and how the F-35 provides necessary capabilities to win in such an environment. I talked with you about how the average age of our current Air Force fighters is now 27 years old and how many of our airplanes would qualify for antique or classic car tags if we were driving them around the streets of Layton. There's no disputing the need for the capabilities the F-35 brings to bear. The jet has proven itself to be survivable and lethal while allowing the technological growth to remain a viable weapon system for decades to come. So the last time I stood here, I asked you to tighten your chin straps and get to work. I asked the men and women of the 388th Fighter Wing, the 419th Fighter Wing, the 75th Air Base Wing, the Ogden Air Logistics Complex, our enterprise partners, and the thousands of airmen around our service who work daily on this program to help deliver the future to the United States Air Force to get this airplane in the fight. Today I want to say loud and clear to our airmen, for both our friends and our adversaries to hear, you delivered. There have been weekend shifts, night work, overtime hours, extra duties, reports, and briefings. 
We've had setbacks and victories, and we've learned lessons along the way. But in the end, American airmen made it happen, just like you always do. You are my heroes, and I'm honored to get to work with you every single day. And just to be clear, everyone involved in this effort is a big A airman. Take, for instance, the men and women of the F-35 Depot Mod Line. What a tremendous effort they provided. They delivered our 12th aircraft 34 days ahead of schedule, and without their efforts, we could not have achieved our desired timeline. I can't thank your team enough. I'd also be remiss if I didn't thank our families and our local communities who gave so much of their time and patience throughout this process. You were all with us from day one, and this is your milestone as well. Of the F-35, I can say unequivocally that we are only beginning to scratch the surface of what this airplane will be able to do in the future. Make no mistake, it is extremely capable today, but it's going to be an absolute monster in the years to come. I wouldn't want to face it on the battlefield, and I can say that as a commander of airmen, I am comfortable and confident sending my warriors downrange to fly, fight, and win in this aircraft. The team we honor here today was charged to bring IOC capabilities for basic CAS, limited seed deed, and interdiction. They've done just that, and in an impressive manner. Our F-35s garnered a 97.5% hit rate across 40 weapons dropped during our spin-up program, 39 direct hits out of 40 munitions employed. To say that we are pleased with that would be a significant understatement. This team also achieved notable results during the capstone deployment to Mountain Home Air Force Base, where it maintained a 92.3% mission-capable rate, launched 88 of 88 scheduled sorties and achieved every required mission objectives with zero F-35 losses from enemy red air. The outcome speaks for itself. Candidly, I felt we would do well, but I was simply amazed by what our team, armed with the F-35, was able to accomplish. My hat's off to you, gang. With all my heart, I believe this crew can accomplish anything and so you remain the natural choice to continue leading the charge to full operational capability. It's a huge honor for us to deliver IOC, but we know our work has just begun. Enjoy these celebrations, savor the moment, and then continue your relentless pursuit of the combat capability necessary to protect our great nation. I'll leave you all with this. I have a small picture in my office inscribed with words from Winston Churchill. Every one of my commanders from the squadron level on up has one as well. The words read, deserve victory. That phrase speaks to me. It's a reminder that no nation is endowed with an inherent right to military victory. There are no bye weeks in war. On the contrary, the victory almost always goes to those who plan, equip, prepare, and execute with the greatest vigilance. You have to earn it every day. Warriors, you have earned it on this day, and you will continue to do so long into the future. I'm proud of you. Secretary James, General Goldfein, General Carlisle, I've described in words for you how our airmen got us here. And now I'd like to show you. Roll the video, please. Thank you. It's been a journey to get here. A process. But we have to get it right. We've flown, trained, 
and tested ourselves. We've validated years of hard work. It wasn't easy. Innovation never is. proud of what we've accomplished. We've done it. We've taken the world's most advanced and newest fifth generation fighter. And made it combat ready. We're ready to fly, fight, and win. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Commander, Air Combat Command, General Hawk Carlisle. Well, good morning, everyone. It is a great morning, and it is a great Air Force Day, and it is absolutely outstanding to be here. I would also like to uh, welcome our incredible congressional and state leadership, Governor Herbert, thank you for being here. Senator Hatch, sure, it's good to see you again. Congressman Bishop. Thank you very much. You honor all of our airmen by being here, and we can't tell you how much we appreciate you being part of this. I'd also like to thank our community leaders. Uh, the support we get here uh, is phenomenal. As I've said many times, it's not hard to get people to come to Hill Air Force Base. It's hard to get them to leave um, because of the quality of the relationship we have with the community. We can't thank you enough for everything you do for us and everything you do for our airmen. Before I introduce our next speaker, I want to take just a few minutes to talk to our airmen. This celebration today is not about an airplane. This celebration today is about our airmen. We are the greatest fighting force in the history of the world, not because of technology, but because of our airmen and what they do with the technology we've given them. Every adversary is going to fear us, and they're going to fear our airplane because what our airmen have done with the F-35. To the 388th and Detroit Lions and his leadership, and the 419th and Shooter Smith and his leadership, and the Air Base Wing under Jen, Jen Hammerstadt, and the Logistics Center under Steve Blameyer. Folks, you guys have been absolutely outstanding, and your airmen have stepped up well above and beyond what we've ever asked and what we ever thought possible. I will be honest, six months ago, a year ago, I didn't really think I'd be standing here the first week in August. But we're here because of you, your leadership, and these incredible airmen that every day step up and do more than we ever thought possible with what we give them. So my hands off, my hats off to our airmen. They're amazing. <laughs> Folks, we love you. Now, the, the, as your wing commander said, no good deed goes unpunished. So this is a step. IOC, the first week in August, the very leading edge of our window is outstanding. But our goal, three 24 PAA squadrons at Hill Air Force flying three F jets that will wreak havoc on any adversary that hopes to face us anywhere, anytime. So we got some work to do, and as your wing commander said, savor this moment, enjoy the weekend, sleep tonight, um, because Monday we got a flying schedule to fly, and we got work to do to get to the next level. Our next speaker, was sworn into her position a little over two and a half years ago. Uh, and I will tell you folks, the program at that time was having a few challenges. It was rocky. She could have stayed on the sideline and waited for the program to turn around, but she didn't. She went to bat, and she went to bat because she believes in all of us, 
She believes in our airmen, and she believes in this program. So she supported and defended this program to the American people. She supported and defended this program to everybody in DOD and the administration. And she supported and defended this program to Capitol Hill in front of Congress. She probably did that a few more times than she really wanted to, but so goes congressional hearings. But she stepped up, she went to bat, and she helped us get to where we are today. Her drive, her vision, gave us the opportunity to be IOC in the world's greatest airplane. Madam Secretary, on behalf of all your airmen, thank you for what you've done for us. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Secretary of the Air Force, the Honorable Deborah Lee James. Wow, that was some, some nice words from General Carlisle. Thank you so much, General Carlisle and Colonel Lyons. Thank you for your excellent remarks. Good morning, one and all. I, too, want to give a shout out to our Utah delegation. You honor us uh, with your presence. Other civic leaders who are with us today, uh, and most of all, most of all, um, our fantastic airmen, who are by far the bulk of the audience here today. Chief, I don't know about you, but as I look out into the eyes of these airmen, I would say this gang is fired up. Am I right? Are you fired up? See, I know about these things, Chief, so I could tell. I could tell by looking, looking at you all, and with good reason, with good reason, because this is an extremely important week in our Air Force. This is a week where we cross the bridge to the future of air dominance. This is a week where our uh, airmen are connected with our joint partners, with our industry partners, some of whom are here today, and the global community, I believe, in an unprecedented way. This is a week where the vision, the vision that many people have had for years now of the Air Force of the future is no longer a vision, but in fact, it has become reality. A week, very importantly, where we are proving the naysayers wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, your and my F-35A Lightning is ready for combat and it is reporting for duty, yes, sir. It certainly is. And there is no doubt, no doubt whatsoever in my mind that by pairing air, space, and cyberspace technologies together, America's airmen and the F-35A will lead the joint force in assuming our nation's advantage against any adversary in the future, especially in the event that we get into a high-end fight with a foe that has anti-access aerial denial capabilities. And do we ever have threats these days? This aircraft uh, could not have come any sooner. The world is challenged, and it has changed in many, many ways in just the mere two and a half years that I have been so honored to be Secretary of the Air Force. We are now facing global challenges in the Middle East, in Europe, in the Pacific, and oh yes indeed, we're facing them right here at home as well. And we are prepared to meet those challenges head on and deliver air power through air, space, and cyberspace domains. Now while achieving IOC is an extremely important milestone for the Air Force and for the F-35 program, and while quite rightly all of you as well as all of us are savoring the moment and we're taking a well-deserved moment to celebrate this momentous occasion. Just as you've heard your other leaders say, our focus now needs to shift to achieving full warfighting capability. This aircraft needs to get better and better in the next few years, and I am completely confident that it will. The key for us going forward, the key for achieving full warfighting capability, will be to move to follow on development to keep pace with, going, with growing complex threats and modern long-range missile systems and to keep on schedule. The other challenge will be to continue our training and our operational commitments that are going on here at Hill. 
Um, it'll also be critically important to continue to focus on price reductions on future lots of F-35 because, you see, without clear attention to the dollars, we may put at risk our ability to buy sufficient numbers of these aircraft in the years to come. But most important of all, most important of all, we need to continue the focus on our people those that fly, those that maintain, those that support the, this unit and others in other ways, as well as the families of our airmen. And I have to point out, this is a total force, one Air Force mission. Here at Hill, as you well know, we not only have a fantastic active duty wing, but we have an equally fantastic reserve wing that are working hand in glove. And my hats go off to you, Colonels Lyon and Smith, for the fantastic job that you're doing here with your airmen. Thank you to all of our amazing airmen. Um, thank you also to the Joint Program Office, as well as to our industry partners. I know that we have members from Lockheed, from Pratt & Whitney, from Northrop Grumman here today, perhaps others. It's been a major team effort. And General Carlisle, General Levy, um, your teams here at Hill and across the board absolutely rock. So thank you so much for the attention that you have put on this program and for helping to bring about this fantastic uh, result. And last but certainly not least, I also want to sh have a shout out to the fantastic leaders both at the state and national level that we have here um, in Utah and to the members of the community surrounding our base for hosting the first operational unit of our F-35 and supporting our airmen. It means a great deal to me as Secretary of the Air Force to know that we are in a location where we are wanted. And every time I have been here at Hill, I have felt that to be true. So thank you very much to the community and to the uh, state leaders who are here. So the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, the F-35 will now provide our country with unmatched advantage, unparalleled technology, but most importantly, top-notch people. We're leading our Air Force, our military, and our nation into the next generation of warfare dominance with this new capability. The future is not the future. The future has arrived. It is here. It is now. So thank you and congratulations to all. Aim high, airmen. Aim high. new airplane and it flew just as if we were simulating it. We're going to build more of AF-1-like airplanes than any other F-35. With the F-35 program, we foresee air dominance for the next 30 to 50 years. The F-35 here starts a new era for us. We now have a capable platform that can go into those highly contested environments and be successful. This airplane is fantastic. The F-35 Lightning II will deliver war fighting capabilities essential to the security of our nation. This jet is a game changer. It is exactly what we need to be competitive in the high-end fight of the future. This is a multinational platform. It will be a part of the Hill Air Force Base community for the next 35 to 40 years.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to introduce our next speaker. Uh, he's one of my best friends, and conservatively, I think we've known each other for 30 plus years. Uh, he is uniquely qualified to talk about what we're about to do here today. He was a wing commander in our first stealth airplane in the United States Air Force in the 49th wing with the F-117. As a matter of fact, it's kind of fitting because he was the wing commander when we retired the F-117, and now he is the chief of staff as we bring online the greatest airplane the world's ever seen and the best fifth generation airplane out there. General Goldfein is absolutely an incredibly proven combat warrior. He's an inspirational leader and a proven leader, and he's a visionary beyond belief. To all airmen here today, folks, I have to tell you, we could not be luckier than to have General Dave Goldfein as our chief of staff. It's my honor to introduce the 21st chief of staff and my very good friend, General Dave Goldfein. getting my act together here, let me what, say for sure that if that video didn't get your heart rate going, you got no heartbeat. <laughs> Thank you and good morning. And what an honor to join Secretary James, General Carlisle, our wing commanders, the Utah delegation, and so many who have played a role in turning our combat commanders' urgent requirement for a fifth generation capability into today's historical declaration of deployable combat readiness. Thanks to Jeff Babione and the Lightning II team at Lockheed Martin, who built this magnificent weapon system that will soon become the quarterback of the joint force. As I look at, out at these magnificent aircraft, and more importantly, as has already been said, the men and women who will employ them in combat, I can't help but feel a little bit nostalgic because in many ways we're repeating history. As General Carlisle said, I was privileged to be the last pilot to check out in our first generation stealth aircraft, the F-117 Nighthawk. It was the brainchild of Lockheed Martin Skunk Works, led by Mr. Ben Rich and his team. We kept that aircraft secret and unacknowledged for nine years. It may very well be the greatest secret our nation has ever kept. Entire families, think about this, entire families grew up never knowing what mom or dad did for a living. They just disappeared on Sunday and reappeared on Friday, year after year after year. In the cockpit of the F-117 was a switch labeled the stealth switch. And when you flipped it, all the antennas stowed, all the radios shut off, and the last thing a pilot did before crossing an enemy territory was try to make himself or herself into a smaller target by lowering the seat. <laughs> Luckily for me, I didn't have to work as hard as others. <laughs> Hawk, I think you and I may have that in common. So think how far we've come in the design and employment of now fifth generation technology. In the F-117, we shut off the world and performed our mission alone in a single domain and without any CONOP that integrated the F-117 with ground or maritime forces. These F-35s start connecting to a network before the pilot even straps on the aircraft. Maintainers are tapping into the network to look at aircraft status. Algorithms are comparing data in the network and determining confidence values that, values that place symbology on the visor and on displays not only in the aircraft, but replicated across the formation and in command and control agencies thousands of miles away. As the Marines continue to develop their B model F-35s with their primary focus, their primary focus on close air support of the Marine Air Ground Task Force, and the Navy brings on their sea model carrier-based version, we will continue to refine our joint tactics, techniques, and procedures to full, fulfill the vision 
of these F-35s as our quarterbacks. Equally important, as our allies and partners receive these aircraft, we will continue to refine how we operate as a coalition as we counter the global challenges presented by China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and violent extremism. Secretary James and I had the opportunity a couple weeks ago to see this in action during Red Flag 16-3, during Big Dollar Night, when the Red Team was unleashed to throw everything that had at Blue Forces. The deployed Expeditionary Wing Commander was Colonel Deanna Burt from Shriver Air Force Base, a Space Weapons School graduate. Her Vice Wing Commander was Colonel Mike Dombrowski, a Cyber WIC grad. The Mission Commander was Captain Flower Hedges, not sure how he got that call sign. <laughs> United States Marine Corps on his mission commander check ride, leading a four ship of F 35Bs. It was the F 35's debut at Red Flag. Think about this 30 minutes before any aircraft crossed in enemy territory, the war was raging full steam in the cyber and space domains. Red forces used every trick in the book to take down blue command and control and degrade ISR while blue forces defended key cyber terrain. Actions in these domains were passed to Captain Hedges and the, in his entire formation to create and increase not only his situational awareness, but also to allow him to call audibles real time based on the status of both friendly and enemy capabilities. Following a formation of F-22s, F-35s working in concert with F-16s took on the enemy both in and from the air, all while cyber, space, and ISR forces were completely and totally engaged. In the middle of the fight, the F an F-16 was simulated as being shot down, requiring an orchestration of a full personnel recovery event. At the same time, ISR forces were tipped off at a high-value target had entered the arena requiring the team to find, fix, validate, and finish their target. All of this in the middle of the night. All of this led by a young captain in his F-35 with more situational awareness on his displays than we have ever enjoyed in the past. Networked, linked, integrated. The quarterback, we've come a long way. And I'd like to end this with a little audience participation. So bear with me. I need you to imagine yourself in an enemy aircraft. And your nation's leadership has made the unwise decision to bet on the US or our allies and partners. Now slowly turn your head and look behind you at these magnificent machines and these magnificent airmen. This is the picture you will likely see before you depart this planet. <laughs> Actually, let me change that. You'll still depart the planet, but you'll never see these. As the 21st Chief of the world's greatest Air Force, I have a message to our adversaries. It sucks to be you. And to our combatant commanders who will employ this magnificent weapon system and these airmen in combined arms of the future, we're ready. Thank you all for attending this great event, Fights On. And now please welcome Colonel Dave Smith, Commander, 419th Fighter Wing.
Thank you all. How can I follow that, sir? <laughs> I get the honor of speaking last. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> uh, Madam Secretary, Joan Goldfein, Joan Carlisle, Chief Cody, Joan Miller, Joan Levy, distinguished visitors, our national, state, and local civic leaders, thank you so much for being here today, but most importantly to the airmen of Team Hill. What an honor it is for us, Colonel Lyons and I, to showcase our airmen, these dedicated airmen, these citizen airmen, all of our airmen in front of you today. And I say all of our airmen because we use that term not just for our active and reserve, but for our civil servants, our contractors, and our industry partners that made this day happen today. We also must not forget the journey didn't start with just Detroit and I or this leadership team. It started with many leadership teams and many airmen before us. Countless airmen built the foundation on the road to IOC that we stand on today. SATAPs, environmental impact studies, MILCON projects, you name it, they did the heavy lifting that got us to where we are today. Today, some of those airmen are sitting in the audience. We owe it to them to recognize them as we sit here today. Now, as General Goldfein said, please, I ask you to take a moment to look behind you. For our airmen, look behind you. Look at that display of air power nestled up against Utah's beautiful Wasatch Range. What a beautiful display, which demonstrates the future capability of this Air Force. The transition from fourth generation to fifth generation, a, te a technology advancement that is required, that's symbolic as we modernize our Air Force that's so desperately needed. This truly is a great time for our combat Air Force. It's the future of our air power, and as well for our joint team and our partner nations. With the declaration of IOC, as Secretary James said, the future is now. It's arrived. That airplane is now a part of our daily battle, battle rhythm. It's what we do every day now. It's part of our organize, train, and equip. And now we're going to bring that combat capability to bear against an adversary to fly, fight, and win in airspace and cyberspace when called upon by our nation's senior leaders right here, civilian and military. Detroit already touched on the F-35 specifics with our road to IOC. I want to talk a little bit about our airmen again. General Carlisle and General Miller both discussed this with us last night, and as General Carlisle said earlier, this is not about the F-35 today. This is about our airmen. It's about our people. To paraphrase, sir, this celebration is all about our people. None of these accomplishments would have happened without our airmen and without their families, without their sacrifices. Our airmen always responded to every challenge that we asked of them. Overtime? Yes, sir. Fourth shift maintenance on a Saturday? Yes, sir. Extra man hours? Yes, sir. They saluted smartly and we delivered. We did that while maintaining two major weapon systems. What you can't see beyond those F-35s is the F-16s. What a task! Not only did we ask the airmen to bring the F-35 to IOC, but we asked them to do it while they maintain and operate combat operations with the F-16. And they did it. They did it proudly, and they did it safely. It's an honor to serve all of our airmen. It's an honor for Colonel Lyons and I to serve you. It's an honor to serve this nation. The 3D8 and the 419th Fighter Ring were the first units to receive combat-coded F-16s in 1979 and 1983, respectively. We have since forged a relationship and a partnership that will go down in history as we bring the F-35 to IOC. I'll close by saying this. To the airmen, to the Team Hill airmen, that's the 388th, the 419th, the 75th the Logistics Center, and all of our industry partners that help make IOC happen. That's active, reserve, civil servant, contractor, it doesn't matter. It's your dedicated selfless service to this nation and this flag behind us that make this nation great your service that made the F-35 IOC part of history. It was that unified effort that makes this the greatest Air Force in the world. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party.
This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending.